it surprises me how few people have read this book. Like every time I bring it up, they're like, I've never heard of a Giacometti portrait. And I'm like, how have you never heard of this book? It is incredible. Today on Art Book Club, we have gone through a Giacometti portrait by James Lord. And let me tell you, this book is an automatic five stars. It's so funny. Visual Nomad and I had a great time reading this book this month and learning truly that we are not the only anxious artists out there. In fact, you can be as celebrated and famous as Giacometti and still be an anxious little neurotic artist, and it's fine. <laughs> you're still going to do good, and you're still going to have great hopes and dreams. In today's episode, we go over the summary of the book, we go over our feelings and thoughts about it as artists, and the delight that it was to read this book, for me, a second time. If you haven't read this book, this must be your next art read. This is a Giacometti portrait. This is Brushwork. All right, friends, foes, it's Art Book Club time, and today we're talking about A Giacometti Portrait by James Lord. This is an itty bitty book. Mm -hmm. You can read it in three hours. <laughs> this book is so good and you should read it, but here's, here's why. You ready? This book is hysterical. You thought it was funny, right? It is. It's... It is hysterical. <laughs> I loved it. It's very entertaining. I feel like reading this book is just like, oh yeah. If I was dreaming about what an artist looked like and I've never met one before and I read about Giacometti, I'd be like, yeah, they are anxious, aren't they? They're just like little anxious boys making art. <laughs> Constantly like, my art's terrible. I can't wait to never make art again. This is going great. This is not going great over and over and over like every day. <laughs> over again. We're really just the most neurotic people on the planet. So... We're not really artists. We're just neurotics, you know? <laughs> I'm like it's so funny. If he was if he was living in this day and age, I'd be like, it's ADHD, it's like a lot of anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a lot going yeah. on here. So essentially, here's the summary of this book. Also, there's spoilers for this episode. If you haven't read this book yet and you don't want spoilers, you should stop listening now and read the book. But for now, here we go. Um James Lord, the author, and Giacometti have been friends for a long time at this point. And Giacometti was like hey, come be my model, come overseas, leave New York and be my model for like a single day and I'll draw you and then you can write about it. And James Lord had been writing articles about Giacometti for quite some time at th this point. Giacometti had just won the Biennale for sculpture. Is that right? Like an award there? Okay. Um, I think so, yeah. That was like two years before this book came out or before the interview happened. And so he was getting famous. And so James Lord had been writing articles about him and was like, okay, I'll come sit for you because you're my friend. And he goes and he goes and sits for two hours and Giacometti's like drawing him and they're chatting. And finally at the end of it, Giacometti's just like, this is no good. You have to come back tomorrow. You, this is just, we can't stop here. You, ha you have to come back. So James is like, okay. <laughs> and comes back the next day. And this goes on for... Not one, not two, but three weeks. <laughs> just mm -hmm. like coming back. You day want me after to stay day. in Paris longer? Yes, please. I guess. Like, I'm fine. Okay with that. Like, he changed, the author <laughs> changes his, like, his, his travel his itinerary, itinerary yeah. over and over again. And it's just like, so when yeah. can I leave? Like, at the end of it, he's just like, am I leaving now? Am I, how about now? Now? <laughs> yeah. And what <laughs> results is a, very observational view of how the artist is at work and his patterns, which could only happen if you stared mm -hmm. at someone for two to three hours a day, every day for three weeks. And yeah, uh, a deepening in their friendship, which was very cool. And also I was like, wow, you know, if I looked at Jack Manny's art, I would not have expected this kind of behavior from him. Like, that's just not what I was anticipating when I looked at it. But yeah. now I'm like, oh, it kind of makes sense. I see it. Yeah. What do you think? I do love this book. I thought it was hilarious because, like you said, the author ends up staying 18 days. And it's this back and forth with Giacometti and him as to when he's going to leave. One day, Giacometti wants him to stay. Another day, he's like, no, I want to stay. I think we can do better. And they get into this rhythm of Giacometti will 
start at like 4 p.m. And they'll paint and paint and paint until it gets so dark that they can't even see. And of course, the whole time is like Giacometti starts off with something that he likes. And he inevitably just paints over it because he, he doesn't like it. He's like, I can do better. This guy at at like day, probably like day eight, day nine is like, dude, if I keep letting you do this, I'm never going to go home. Yeah. And at one point he's like, um, I have to go back to New York sometime. Like I have to. He's like, I would love to stay here, but I, I have to go. My life is in New York. <laughs> and so they have a little laugh about that. Mm -hmm. And they come to the conclusion that they're going to go four more days. That's it. We got four more days and then I'm getting on a plane and I'm going home. They do set up a deadline. Diego, Giacometti's brother, comes in at one point. He's like, how are you still painting? You can't see anything. He's it's like, so that's dark. not true. He's like, I can see all the light that's important right now. So it's so funny. Like they turn on the light every night and they see the final piece and they're just like, oh yeah, I guess that is good. Not bad. That works. You know, <laughs> it gets to the point where the author has learned Giacometti's rhythm so well on the last day, basically tricks Giacometti into ending the painting. Mm hmm. Like, he figures out when to stop him. Because if he lets him go one step further, he will literally paint over the whole painting and I'll be there for another day. Uh-huh. It's so good. It's so funny. And so he's like, he picks up this. I need to jump in right before mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm tired. I need to get up and walk around. <laughs> and he's never said this to Giacometti before. <laughs> and so Giacometti's like, oh, okay. And so he, like, gets up and he's like, I think it's done. He's like, yeah, I think it is too. He's like, it could be better. He's like, next time we'll do better. <laughs> My favorite is that every oh. like good stopping point, James Lord is like, wow, this is great. We could just stop here. And Jack Money's mm -hmm. like, no, this is just a beginning. It's a beginning. There's an opportunity here. There's an opening. And he says this uh -huh. like every freaking day. Yeah, there's an opening is his favorite saying. There's an it's opening. An opening. <laughs> there's space here. And he's like, at one point, like he, he looks at the painting. He's like, man, this is really good like he's saying this to himself he's like i don't know that i want him to touch this again he's like i don't know if he'll ever get back to this point he's like do i stop him he's like i don't know that i could like he's not gonna listen to me i'm just sitting for him you know <laughs> and so it's so funny and of course he end up inevitably paints over it and he paints over it several more times because i think that was like at day eight or day nine so he still had another nine days to paint it's funny because they would they would take a break and they would go to the cafe mm -hmm. and like before they would leave he'd be like it's good it's good it's going somewhere and he would sit down in the cafe and inevitably within like 10 minutes he's pounding the table saying how bad of a painter he is and how he should just quit and never paint again <laughs> the one story he tells he comes in and Giacometti has come back from a portrait review for lithographs comes in and he's like it's no good it's no good and he starts pulling stuff out of this this portfolio that he has and he starts lighting them on fire mm -hmm. just obliterating James them lord is like oh my god like do i stop him <laughs> what am i do like what do i do and he's like you don't want to do that he's like yes i do and he starts throwing more in there he's just like they can't make lithographs off the paper that I'm doing anymore. So there's no sense in keeping them. James Lord grabs like a handful of these pieces and hides them from Giacometti. Like squirrels them away. <laughs> and lets him burn the rest of it. And Giacometti isn't like he's nonplussed about it. Like he meant what he said. Like mm -hmm. that's one thing that is very interesting about Giacometti is he does this up and down. But he's very calculated about what he does and he has a reason for it. He may be extreme in how he carries out his final resolution, mm -hmm. but it makes sense. He's just like, you know, like he said, you can't, you can't make a lithograph off of these. Why would I keep them around? Exactly. You know, I can't do anything with these anymore. And so, and to him is like, if it's not selling, what am I doing with it? You know, he doesn't want to live with it. Like every other artist, he's being surrounded and suffocated by his pieces in his studio. And so... Uh, yeah, he hides these pieces from Giacometti. He eventually gives them to him right before he leaves. He gives them to him and Giacometti just kind of smiles. 
<laughs> he's like you did the right thing you did the right thing <laughs> hiding my own so, work for me yeah yeah <laughs> so dramatic Just, he's so dramatic you know, yeah yeah and it's so funny because his brother Diego is so patient with him and he's just like yeah it's whatever like everybody that sat for him for an extensive period of time an affection James Lord talks to one of his female sitters who sat for Giacometti for years and they start telling stories back and forth about you know what they've perceived in Giacometti's process and she's like oh yeah he does that all the time don't worry about it like <laughs> She's like, I've been here, done that. Let me help you. <laughs> and so they they trade war stories, and it's it's really funny. It's so good. It's so good. I think one of my favorite parts about this book is at the beginning of each chapter, you get to see a photo of the portrait as it's been being developed over the few weeks. And some of the mm-hmm. portraits, some of the photos are like really bad. They're like not even like showing the whole painting, but like it's kind of funny. You can see the progress happening, and you can see where. Homeboy is getting upset and you're like, okay, here we have a head and here we have like a black fuming blob thing where there's, it's just been painted over. And it, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I really liked the, the pushback that Jack Mitty would give to James about, about finishing a piece, about doing the rest of it. Cause mm. James Lord was always like, why don't you move on from the head and move on to the shoulders or the jacket or whatever. Yeah. And, and Jack Mitty would just be like, no, the, the picture is here in this moment. And it, you don't have to fill up a whole piece to have it finished, have it be finished. And mm. trying to like, I don't know, influence each other over that, over over James being like, I'm trying yeah. to get my friend to be less anxious about what he's making. <laughs> and, and Jack and Minnie being like, no, this is what the art is. <laughs> and it's it was sweet yeah. in a way, but it was it was interesting. Um, I wish we got to see yeah. pictures of the head from memory of um, the brother, of Jack and Minnie's brother. So between mm. yeah. working on this, the author kept talking about a sculpture of Diego's head. Jack Mitty was making the sculpture from memory of his brother's head and working on it throughout the whole time and would constantly like work on the portrait and then scurry over and work on the on the sculpture and then come on back. And he did, he did a lot of this in my brain, just scurry. I think it would have been interesting to see that progression as well, but we only got to see the portraits of, of the portrait, which I think turned out pretty cool at the end. Yeah. When you see the very last picture, which is the one that's on the cover right there. It's it's mm-hmm. fantastic. It's great. Were you pretty familiar with Jack Benny's work before reading this? I mean, I've heard his name, uh, but if I was asked, you know, what pieces he's made, I couldn't necessarily point them out. That's valid. I, I've i only known him from his sculptures of his really tall people that are walking, <laughs> that are like mm-hmm. really skinny. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, before yeah. reading this book, I hadn't seen any of his or recognized any of his drawings or lithographs before. So this was this was cool to see in this book. The conversation that him and James have about him being famous, because at this point, Giacometti is very well known. Mm-hmm. He's showing in London at the Tate. He's done several shows there. He's got a show coming up. They want to finish this painting for a show that he's got coming up in America. So he's had several pieces in America at different you know, museums and, and galleries and stuff. James asks him, like, isn't it surreal? At one point, he has a dignitary from, like, India or something yeah. show up and say that they, they want to, like, sit down and have a conversation with him, you know? And and possibly, you know, paint a portrait or paint a picture for him to hang in their country. And, you know... He, James asks him, you know, isn't it surreal when you have that happen? Like somebody just shows up at your doorstep from halfway across the world Mm -hmm. and they know who you are and you have no idea who they are. He's like, yeah, it's, it's a bit surreal and I can't really understand it. He's like, I don't think I'm anything special. Basically. He's like, but yeah, he's like, I guess it is kind of weird, you know, that I have to deal with this, but, um, yeah, he puts Cezanne on a pedestal. Oh, yeah. He's like, if only I could draw like Cezanne, you know? <laughs> he's like, I'll leave it to him. <laughs> One time he says, he's like, Cezanne could come in here and finish this painting in two brushstrokes and just be done with it. Why can't he Oh, be? yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. He's like, him or the Byzantines can come in and do this. <laughs> He's like, why am I even trying? Why am I even trying? Oh. Yeah. He could not take a compliment anytime James tried to be no. genuine with him, anytime any praise was being put on. Um, Jack Mooney would essentially, he didn't say these words that right, he might have, but he would essentially tell them just to shut up and to stop talking. And he would shut people down like really abruptly. Um, yeah. And uh, I think that just says a lot of, about him as a, as a person, not being, and like how he views his own artwork mm-hmm. as just like unworthy all the time. It's a lot. It's a lot of anxiety. Well, because it's a juxtaposition of like, you know, as you're reading this, you know who Giacometti is. Like, you you know that he's a famous artist. Mm-hmm. So he's obviously made it. Like Some of them didn't make any money, but Giacometti was one of the few that made money during his lifetime. He was very well. In the back of his head, he had to know, obviously, I'm good enough to support myself and my brother on this work. Because his brother helped him do some of his, uh, he poured all of his sculptures for him he had to know like yeah obviously i'm good like you came from america for me to paint you i've got people showing up at my doorstep and people in the the streets that know who i am every right. time i walk around you know and is- so yeah like how do you resolve that in your brain like that's weird that's just weird to me there's a point in this book um in like the, the latter half where Jack Amity comes back to the studio after getting the mail and he has this like large package in his hands. <laughs> he opens it up because James is like, what, what is that? What is this giant package? And it's just <laughs> like a casual 5 million francs. <laughs> and he, he opens it up, which would have been about a million US dollars at that time. <laughs> like like yeah. a lot of money. And like just he, mailing it. And he's just like, mail it. In just US mail it. Mail, you know? And he's like, yeah, I've got another 7 million just like put away somewhere in my bedroom but I can't find it because I've hidden it so well and then there's like a little montage where James and Giacometti like go searching for it and don't find it <laughs> it's very funny <laughs> and I'm like oh, oops no. I misplaced my seven million I'm oops. like I would bet anything that his wife knows exactly where it is and is keeping track of all of this for yeah. him yeah oh my gosh yeah yeah this book is it's super charming it's a fun it story. You're like, oh, I love this relationship between James and and Jack and Eddie. Like, at what point Homeboy gets sick? Like, I feel like going and sitting for an artist this long is like going to a residency where you like thoroughly get to know someone, and then it's just like, yeah, whoosh, then it's over, and you get to see all sort of yeah. stages of life and being. I I feel really happy that I don't feel the way about my work as Jack and Eddie does about his. Like, I, I like my work. <laughs> and you don't have to come in here and steal my work away so I don't destroy it. Like, that's never going to be an issue. But um, I feel like I've seen a lot of artists that have this kind of anxiety about their artwork. And it's it's yeah. uh, it's intense. It's intense. Yeah. He kept yeah. saying things like, I'm yeah. trying to do something impossible. Like, I'm trying to make something impossible. And yeah, I'm trying to reach that. It's like, why am I even trying this? And you got to remember one thing he keeps juxtaposing this all with are photographs. Photographs had basically just come out and become fairly popular to where everybody could take them. And he's like, why even draw? A photograph does such a better job than I could ever do of drawing this. And and like he comes around, he's like, yeah, it doesn't have any soul, but, you know, it's better. <laughs> and so it's better. this like competition he's having with photographs for some reason. It's it's fantastic. It's a yeah, it's it's interesting. I I I think it's interesting that he was so down about his work and truly disliked what he made constantly. And yet I don't think I've seen anything else like what he's made just ever. Like the way he draws mm-hmm. has so yeah. much it's so specific and it's so different and it's really cool. Did you have a favorite part in yeah. this book? When he's sick. Like He's like, I'm freezing. James is in the, the studio with them sitting. And he turns the heater on. And James is warm to begin with. So James starts, like, taking off his <laughs> coat that he's got on. And Chocometti's like, what are you doing? He's like, we're going to draw in the nude today. And he's like, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Like, they were such good friends, like, by that point. Like, and when they leave, they're, like, sad to leave each other. Like, they eventually 
come back together several times over their lifetime for Giacometti to, to draw him and, and paint him. Um, so they obviously built some kind of rapport with each other. They're just funny. They're funny. I like the odd couple. I'm like I want to hang out with you two. <laughs> you two are great. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, some um, funny stuff. Being in a studio with other artists is so important sometimes. Like, it's so good to have that banter. It kind of relieves that that pressure that you have mm -hmm. while you're working. Like, that intensity that you have to have to work. Like, you just banter with each other and you come up with funny jokes and you find your each other's quirks and make fun of each other. It's, it's good fun. Um, <laughs> James has written a proper biography about Giacometti that I believe came out mm. after his death. So I'm considering mm. reading that in the future and I'll let you know how it is. But he's also done a book on Picasso, which is probably pretty good. But I'm oh, like, wow. do I like his style of writing because of how like casual and intimate this book felt? Or I'm like, or am I, am I going to actually like his other kinds of writing? I'm not sure, but I'm going to investigate. Yeah, because he kind of stumbled over this process just because he had a friend back in the States that wanted to know what was going on. So... He would write down during the day and at the end of the day what had happened and then he would just send letters back to his friend mm -hmm. so he had all these notes of you know things that had happened Giacometti would ask him what he's doing he's like oh just taking notes you just know notes. <laughs> and so he learned that process for for his writings like this he would use those that was his process because the other books I don't know what kind of cadence he has with those We'll see. It kind of felt like reading this book felt like reading a journal almost. It just was like dialogue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it felt like Very I was so. already friends with both of them. And I was like, this is, mm -hmm. it's just so good. This is my second time reading this book. Um, I even, I wrote down the mm -hmm. year I'd written, read it the first time at the back of the book. And I was like surprised to see it. But I first read it in 2016. Let me tell you, it holds up. Oh, wow. It's still good. I love this book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you could make a you could make a sitcom out of this. Like oh, oh, sorry. It's, it's it's just got that kind of charm to it. You Not know? only can you, but there has been a movie made based off of this book, and about their relationship. Oh wow! Um, it's called The Final Portrait, okay. and it's a little bit dramatized. It's got like Army Hammer in it, and <laughs> and like some other people I don't know. Oh, okay. um, but um, it came out in 2017, I believe. I have okay. not seen it, but I when I was researching this book, I was like, oh, there's a movie. You know, read the book. Like, I don't care about the movie. Read the book. But, like, I'm going to watch the yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would be interesting to watch the movie after reading this, mm -hmm. see how they adapted it. <laughs> Any final thoughts on this book? Just that, like, I know that you don't have the struggle of, like, when you're painting, like, this isn't good enough. Like, just get rid of it. Um seeing that somebody at his level mm -hmm. struggles with that there's some comfort in that you know I I don't have it as strongly as some other people do I had a friend that would paint portraits of other people mm. and if you didn't get them from her quick enough she would paint over them in black because she didn't like them Bruh. and she did this with several pieces I never got my portrait. She painted over it in black before I could ever get it. <laughs> Do I know this person? <laughs> I kept bugging her. I was like, I want this. Will you send it out? Yeah, I'll send it out. I'll send it out. And she's like, actually, I painted over it. I was like, really? I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to come find you. <laughs> like, do I have to fly to you and steal this out of your studio? <laughs> yeah, right? Rude. Right? Mm -hmm. She's notorious for that. Like, she would just, she would have these fits of... Yeah, this sucks. I'm done. And over. she just black paint right over it, you know? It's not like I've never done that because yeah. I definitely have, but usually I just remove the mm -hmm. canvas from the stretcher and I just like, I have, okay, see this, yeah. this table behind me and you see that stack of papers Yeah. and think that's where all the paintings of shame live. Oh, okay. That's up. your pile of shame. Okay. <laughs> My no. pile of shame is in the closet. There oh, aren't many in there, but there is a pile of shame in there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Everybody's got a pile of shame. I've got a pile of shame under my bed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where do you, listeners, where do you keep your oh. pile of shame? I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. I'm planning on doing critiques more on brushwork, and 
I am going to start with my own student work to show people examples. <laughs> I think it's going to right? be very fun. Because like, mm -hmm. people think it just like magically happens that you're this good. And it's like, there are very few exceptions of that happening. Like even Picasso put in time, like he spent a bunch of time at, you know, the bullfights and stuff. And that's really where he honed everything in. And his dad was a teacher. So his dad taught him from the very beginning. So mm -hmm who's constantly learning. Um, so yeah, everybody's got a process of like, this is my beginning. Yep. <laughs> to see the struggles. They're there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got them. Have you gotten to the point where the early work that you've ever given to people has started to come back to you? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No, I've only ever given out two pieces. Oh, wow. That I know of. So um, now I've sold some stuff, but that hasn't come back. But like, as gifts i have two paintings both of which i wish i could have back yeah they've not come back to me mm. i've had a wave of this happening the last year and every time it happens i find it funnier oh, wow. and funnier where paintings that i've given to relatives or whatever in the first like five years of me making art has slowly i've been getting phone calls like hey stevie i'm moving would you like this piece back and of course I say yes, because what are they going to do? They'll throw it away. So I right. say yes, and I pick it up, and I'm just like, oh, baby Stephanie art. It's so cute, but this has happened like six <laughs> times. And I'm like, do you want some yeah. new stuff? And they're like, no, that's fine. And I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> like, it's fine yeah. if you don't like abstraction. I'll take the horse paintings back. Thank yeah. you. Amazing. Perfect. Um, all right. This book five out of five i love it i will read it again in a decade i'm sure and have a good time mm -hmm. yeah how are you rating it five out of five yeah it's it's one of my favorite that we've read so far it was really good very Same. engaging so cute so good oh. so funny all right the next book we're gonna yeah. read is not cute but it is fun probably <laughs> i haven't read this one yet this is new to me this is it's... called it's spicy. It's spicy. It's called Working Girl on Selling Art and Selling Sex with Sophia Giovanotti. Um, and I I saw this book on a whim in the art section and I was like, I don't think I have ever read a book on sexuality in art and definitely not one about selling sex. So I'm excited to read it and we'll see what happens. Um, the premise is... Let me read you the blurb. As a young artist trying to make a living in New York without sacrificing all of her time to pay rent, Sophia turns to sex work, first telling herself that it was part of her art, then quickly accepting it simply as a way to make the most money in the shortest amount of time. Weaving between the art world and the sex industry, she learns how much two markets have in common, both built on the buying and selling of creativity and desire, authenticity and intimacy. The power of each lies in believing or pretending they can provide meaning outside of the monetary exchange. So, um, I'm I'm stoked to read this. I think it's going to be great. We're going to talk mm. about this book in November. It's also a short read, a little bit longer than Giacometti Portrait. And I'm, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. We've talked a little bit about censorship in the past when it comes to art, but never, never like this. Mm. So this will be fascinating i'm intrigued this will be the last book that we are reading for 2024 we're gonna take december off of book club which means that the november pick will be a two month long book so i'll pick something a little bit longer for us to go through do i have i don't have another ninth street women but like <laughs> i do have some like 500 page books <laughs> So, oh my god stevie <laughs> stevie's like yay i get to do my 900 page books yay! never again never no no more of those we're gonna keep it like lower but you know i'll pick something that's not like little like this one which is tiny meet us back here on twitch in november it'll be super fun otherwise uh peace out girl scouts have a good day see you later make good choices bye hey real quick before you leave i have a call to arts i am looking for five artists who want to be a part of one of my upcoming brushwork episodes i'm doing an episode on artist statements and i need five people to send me their artist statements so i can review them show you how to improve them and edit them live on the podcast this way other artists can see what they're doing right what they're doing wrong how to improve and you know together we improve each other. If you're interested in improving your artist statement and having that wow factor and making it really good or even just better than it is now, you should let me edit it for you <laughs> live on the podcast. To the email below, send me your artist statement, one picture of your work, 
and a link to your social media page. Maybe that's Instagram or a website. And if you don't have one, don't worry. Just send me an image and your, your artist statement. And that way I can edit it on the podcast for free. What you'll get is an edited copy of your artist statement that I've done here on the podcast and you can use it however you like. This call is good until I get five participants or until the end of October, so send it quickly, okay? If you're watching this in November of 2024 or later, I am still taking submissions for editing artist statements. It'll be on my Patreon, but it won't be free. So get in while the getting's good. Okay, that's all, make good choices, go paint something, bye! <laughs>